Well, hello everybody. I'm gonna. I'm Jordi Bailina from Iron3, and I'm gonna talk today uh, about two tools. One is called Circom, and another is SnarkJS. Circom is mainly to build uh, circuits uh, to be used in zero knowledge, and SnarkJS is an independent implementation of the Zika Snarks uh, protocol, fully written in, in in JavaScript. So let's start. Well, here I have an introduction. I'm sure that most of you already know what's a zero knowledge if you are in, in, in this place, but just to, just to focus, you know, it's like we have a, a, a circuit, sometimes it's called a statman or a deterministic program that have an input, have an output. Input can be private or public. No input, and the idea is that you execute that, that program, you execute that deterministic program. Sometimes this program can be understand. I like to, to understand it very much as an electronic circuit so that you have inputs, either electrical input signals, and then you have and source and some, uh, you know, some combinations and you have a, an output. This, they are not really electrical signals and they are not either neither bin binary, but it works very much uh, like what, that way. And the idea is quite, quite easy. The idea is that we just execute a circuit and then we prove that we executed that circuit, but without revealing neither the inputs nor the internal signals. We just prove that we executed a circuit in a way that the output and the public inputs were that specific. Okay, that's the zero knowledge, the zero knowledge proof. Of course, the proof must be okay and and and, and all the characteristics. But that's the idea. So Yes, that's what we want to prove, but how we write those circuits? What are those programs? Well, as I told you, the idea is, let's start with a very, very simple circuit. This is an electronic circuit. It's a, it's a NAND gate, okay? Here you can see, for example, the, the, truth, the truth table. Uh, of course. So depending on the input of the signals, you have a, a specific output. The interesting thing is that this input can be converted to a constrained system. So here we have only three signals, and whatever output we have here, we need to find S1 and S2 that follows this signal. You see that if S1 or S2 is equal to 1, then 1 minus 1 is 0, so S3 is 0, is this case of here. And if S1 uh, or, or S2 is 0, then 1 minus 0 is 1, and then this, this fits. And this is, the, this is the constraint, okay? So how would we write this circuit in Circom? Here we have the single implementation. We see here that we define a template, it's called none. We define the, the signals. In this case, we have S1, S2, and S3. S1 and S2 are inputs, S3 is output. And we just here, we just assign S3 to one minus S1, S2, okay? So this would be and of course, this is just a template, and then here we instantiate that template. That would be a minimal signal and a minimal, like a hello world of a circuit, okay? As you see, but this is a very trivial, probably it's a very useless circuit, but it, it would be a, a circuit, okay? And you see here, very, a little bit, we just start to see here what's the, the taste of a circum, how you will write this. What else can you do in, in Circom? Circom is mainly a DSL, a DSL language. So the idea is that you can build circuits in a, a bottom down. So you do a, you have a, like a big circuit that's decomposed in the smaller circuits. The smaller circuits are decomposed in the smaller, the smaller, the smaller, and then you have all the hierarchy of the circuit, and at the end you go to the wire. The same way, very much the same way that when you design electronics, that you are just uh, putting small circuits together to ma make bigger circuits and then you end up building whatever circuit you want to build, hash functions and anything you can imagine out of there. Okay, so here, how it works? Well, here, of course, the, you, we have the, the system of equations. Here we have five signals. The system of equations is, well, here's the first NAND. This is the second NAND. Okay, and, and here are, these this systems of equations must, must fit. This is what we are proving. We are proving that we know all the signals that so given some, in this case, S2, S4, and S5, we know S3 and S1, that fulfills this constraint system. That's mainly what we are proving in us. So how we do this? Yeah, well, we have this template. This is the same one that we had uh, in the last slide. 
well, we, we changed the names here. We have input A, input B, the output, and then we have the output. And here we see how we composite that. So here we have the, sign the, the signals, uh, two, well, three inputs, uh, one output, and one that's just an intermediate signal is this S3, okay? We define also S1 as private in this case. Here we instantiate the two templates of this NAND, and then we just connect the signals then we just connect the signals uh, there. We just assign, so S1 goes to G1.A, S2 to G1.B. Here, uh, G1, the output of G1 goes to the, the A input of G2, S3 goes to the B input of G2, and the output goes, the output of G2 goes to S5. You see here a normal DSL not normal way to connect. And now we get create a bigger, a composite, but from this, in this we can get another bigger one and we can, we can connect and we can generate this composition, okay? So this is a very good, it's, but it's, a, it's a good way to design. It's very different, right? It's just uh, the people that come from the, the electric engineers, it's quite common to design uh, circuits this way. So, okay, let's go to a more, another more useful circuit. In this case, as I told you, here in, in, the, in these circuits, the inputs are, 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 are uh, here should be binary, okay? But uh, internally, all the circuits, we work in the field. The field is uh, some, a number between zero a prime, and the prime number close to two to the 50, so with 256 bits. So it's our big, big uh, numbers. So here, <laughs> I'm sure that we are able to find in these constraint systems some signals that are neither zero nor one, so that they are not binary, that maybe fulfill this uh, circuit. And that's not what we really want. So I'll, it's, in many cases, when we work to really work with uh, uh, binary circuits, there is one important circuit that mainly what it does is com it converts a field number to binary inputs. So what we do? Well, of course, you see that the binarization, so if B0 is binary, so B0 2 to the 0 plus B1 2 to the 1 plus B2 2 to the 2 to the 2 must be equal to F, okay? That's the first constraint that must fulfill this, okay? And the second constraint is that, 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 is that the outputs must be binary. How we do that? Well, we add this constraint for each of the output signals. In this case, it's V0 times V0 minus V1. This constraint can only be fulfilled if V0 is either zero or one. If V0 is not neither zero nor one, then this system will never fulfill, okay? So here, so here is mainly how we build. How we do that in circum? Well, easy. The, the thing is that, okay, we have an input, it's F call. We have three outputs here. I want to show here that uh, circum works perfectly with arrays. Actually, it works with multiple dimensional arrays. So in this case, we have uh, three outputs uh, given an array. And then here we construct, here in this case, we construct these, uh, these uh, constraints. In this case, is this second line of here. So for three times, b dot i equal b dot i minus one equal 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 zero. This equal, what you do here is you are adding a constraint, okay? And the, the, the last constraint, here we do it here, okay? So it's b zero plus two times b one plus four times b two must be equal to, must be equal to f, okay? And here you will see a special operator that's a, an arrow, but it's just with a, it's a single line arrow. In this case, what we are doing is we are assigning, like by hand, the, the, what's the real value uh, that should go to v, VI. In this case, it's F a slice as lifetime. This, this line, the difference between this and a normal, and, and a, and a normal assignment, like this, is that this adds, like a, this adds a constraint. In this case, for example, here, this, it, it, it assigns the, this value to S3 plus add a constraint that S3 must be equal to, to this. With a single arrow, with a single arrow, uh, uh, with a single arrow, we just assign the, the, the value, but we are not adding the constraint. In general, when, when we are, we can split between the assignment, the, the witness calculation, and then the constraint 
in two different in two different in two different lines. This so mainly is a, a double arrow is equivalent to a single arrow to an assignment and a single a single equity. Why is that? Well, mainly circum it has like two rounds. When it compiles, it has like two rounds in general. The first one it constructs the constraints system, and the second round it generates the code to compute all these intermediary circuits. So, so it's actually it does it, it it generates the code that computes all the that runs the sync that you gen, that generates the witness that generates all the intermediary intermediary signals. So this this uh, so this um, this circuit is executed like two, two, two times. One to generate the constraints, and then is the, the when you generate the con, when you are calculating the witness. Here it says how you put how you calculate the the, the signals, how you calculate these intermediary signals. Okay, so let's go to a more interesting one. Here, imagine that we want to generate, uh, create a library of, uh, you know, for, gen for any number of binaries. And uh, here is what we call with, that's why we use parametric templates. We can generate a set of, uh, um, a set of templates that are parametric. In this case, the parameter is the number of output bits. Okay? So here, you see that the, this, uh, in the templates, we can define an n, so this can define different parameters. In this case, it's just n. And of course, we have input f. The output half n, OK? And of course, the loop is n. And here, the, the interesting part on here is that we define this variable ls. So it's like this is linear combination 1. But I'll start with 0. And this, um, because it, this, it, this works a little bit different when it computes the, the, the constraint system and when it compute, when it's, it's used to calculate the, 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 the code for generating the, the, the witness. In the, when I'm computing the constraint system, L, 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 when I'm adding L, LC1 uh, times LB, y, y, what I'm adding is this to the, to the linear combination. So I'm not really adding, I'm just joining together in the, in the in this phase of uh, generating the of generating the constraints, but uh, when I'm computing the when I'm computing the the the, the witness, then here is execute the way it is. It's, it just says that L, L, L C one must be equal to F, so it does actually it does nothing because what it counts is this one. Okay, so you see here is just a general a generic way. Of, of creating circuits, okay? Is this the same? It's the same that, that here, okay? Uh, let's go for a, let's say an, another more complex system. Imagine that we want to do a binary other, okay? And we want to add a binary, binary operands, but uh, I can have like M operands, and uh, each operand have n, n, n bits. Okay, so I want to have imagine that a 64 number a binary bit plus a 64 number bit plus a 64 number bit. So I want to do a triple addition of uh, 54. How would I do this in, in, in circum? Well, here first of all is we need to understand what are the constraints that I'm building here. The first one is actually what the others does? Well, here you see that the number of outputs is not n; it's n plus c because you know you have like a carries. If you have two two operands, we'll have one bit of carry. But if you have three, four, five operands, the the number of carries will be will be higher. Okay. So here is the constraint system. Here mainly this is the first operand. Put it so the first operand with uh, in a binary. So putting, just adding with the binaries. This is the second operand. You have all the operands. And this must be equal to the output. OK? And finally, for each output, we also force that our binary. With this system, we add all, everything all together. OK? So let's write that in, in, in circum. Here is, well, here, this is the bin sum. Here you see that this bin sum have two parameters, n, which is the, the, 
the how white is the operand, m is how many operands we want to add, okay? And here we calculate the variable that's called n out, is mainly is how many outputs should be. And here to calculate that, I define a function, a function that's called n bits, okay? Here what I pass is how many bits, how many bits have a, okay? Here is what I'm asking, and here is how many bits has the maximum number that I can add is uh, the maximum number for each operand is two to the n minus one, and because there are m operands, this is like the maximum number. So what I'm doing is how many bits have these maximum numbers? And well, here what I'm doing is mainly I'm just trying, you know, I'm just uh, I'm starting to zero and and, and multiple, so I'm adding a bit, adding a bit, and adding a bit, and when this is gets higher, then, and then I just stop. Okay, so I have here input signals of m and n, you see it's here the, 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 the multidimensional array, and then uh, I have an output of the number of outputs that I generated before, okay? And then what I'm doing is, well here is uh, for, this is for, for the first, this for, mainly for, I'm calculating, for the, the first side, the left side of the constraints is, is called left, left in, this is what I'm doing, is just adding for each operand and for each, uh, I'm, I'm putting this side, okay? In the, in the, in the, here in the other side, I'm calculating the, all the output and here is the inequality. So here is the, 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 the constraint. So here we construct all that. And then of course for all outputs, I just put the, I just put the, the, the constraint, it's where that's binary, so all this constraint, and then of course I need to calculate the outputs by hand. So I'm adding this, so I'm just calculating what's the ln, the, the, the width of this ln. So you see here with uh, not many lines of codes, uh, you can do a quite complex uh, binary circuit, uh, a quite complex binary circuit, okay? Okay, let's go to the next example. The other interesting thing is uh, baby jab cup, baby jab or jab jab in the in the case of uh, snarks, but in here we are working very much in the first version in in uh, of Ethereum. Uh, well, it's just a normal elliptic curve that have the property that the 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 field, the order of the field of that works in this curve is exactly the order of the curve that we are working. So the idea is that when we are, are multiplying or adding in this formula, we can do it um, in the same circuit. So this is, so here is just a multiplication, that's another multiplication, that's a normal addition. So creating these formulas uh, in a circuit are very easy and are, they are very cheap in constraints. And this allows, this is a secure curve, so it is allows to, to do anything, uh, a lot of cryptographic elements inside the curve. Okay, for example, uh, you know, signature schemas, uh, uh, hash schemas, and, and many, other, many other things. Okay, so how would you do, you add in the curve? Here you have x1, a1, x2, a2, and here I just calculate with the formulas, I just calculate x out and uh, y out. You can see that you have one, two, three, four, uh, five, and six uh, constraints with a single full addition of a, an elliptic curve, which is quite um, optimal for, for that. But you see that writing that in circum is, is quite uh, trivial, okay? So it's not, it's just uh, multiplying and, and calculating them all together, okay? Here, well, I want to present, here we have a circum leap. Needs a little bit of documentation if you go inside, but here, uh, in Circom, we have implemented with a lot of uh, components already, you know, binary fields and binary converters, all the baby hub uh, at, at, in Edwards and Montgomery, you know, baby, the baby hub, uh, well, this, this kind of curves can, can be interchanged between Edwards and Montgomery and, and it saves a lot. I think in Montgomery, instead of six constraints, it's half only three, but you cannot add the zeros and, and you have to take an account in that. But depending what you are doing, it, it's convenient to change to Montgomery, do a lot of operations, and then change back to Edwards and all that stuff. We can have the, all the EDDSA implementation, the Pedersen implementations, the MIMC7, which is not sure if it's, they are safe or not, but they are also implemented in this. We have all the sparse Mercury tree implementation here, are uh, for verification, inclusion and exclusion verification, and also all the 
uh, insert and delete, well, insert and del update and delete proofs inside a uh, sparse Merkle tree. They are all implemented there. All sort of compar comparators, uh, well, logical comparators. Even there is a SHA-256 functions there and many more that we are writing uh, on there. So, well, this is like a, it, this has been very much used to also to, to improve and to test that CIRCOM is a good way for writing components uh, um, in, a zero, in, a, in, in, in this context. And uh, CIRCOM connects very much with uh, SNARK.js. SNARK.js, well, as I told you, is an independent implementation of the Zika SNARKs protocol. Um, it supports uh, the classical Pinocchio uh, schema, but also the Growth 16, which is much more optimal. Okay, it's poorly written in JavaScript. I know that JavaScript is not, well, it's the worst. You know, it's the probably it's the worst language to write anything about in cryptography. But the, the nice thing is that it works in the browser quite well. And right now we are, well, we'll talk a bit later, but we are rewriting that everything in Wasm, so the, it's quite optimal. Uh, well, it's fully browser compatible, which is cool. So of course, it's full, absolutely open source and compatible. And it's very easy to use. So now we are going to do a demo. It's an NPM library, so you can um, create your programs and that generate the proof, that test the proof, that verifies the proof in a normal, in JavaScript, so in Node or in, bro in, a, in a browser. So that's like the cool thing of, of Snark.js. Okay? So let's do a, okay, I've explained that, so let's see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is just a small demonstration here. You see that, uh, uh, well, um, to install them, I already have installed it in my computers, but you install as a normal, as a normal, uh, install as a normal JavaScript NPM package, okay? Uh, well, I'm gonna create a directory. Okay, I'm going to create a program. In this case, is uh, I'm just creating a program. It's a multiplier. Mainly, you see here that's a very easy program. You know, two inputs, one output, and then the output is uh, just the multiplication of A and B. This, well, you can understand, you know, that factoring two numbers is not, is quite difficult. So the idea is that you prove that, you know, the, in this case, they are private. So you would prove that you have two numbers that when you multiply them together, you give C. Of course, this is not a practical circuit because we here, we are not working with natural numbers. We're working with the field numbers. So I can, if I have A, I can just find the, the inverse and find the other that multiplies that. So this is not a working program. So not a working program, but it's just an example of how you would do it uh, for this. It's a single, a single circuit, okay? So you, here, what you are proving is that you know two numbers and when you multiply them in, in the modulus, this, uh, the, this, uh, this big prime number, it gives this number, okay? So we already have the circuit there. It's called here, well, we created the, uh, here is multiplier.circom. So now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we are, I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to compile that. Here, well, I just compile it. I'm just, okay, the input is circum and the output is just a JSON, which is uh, just a, com a compiled version. So you will see uh, the constraints and, and info and all that stuff. For example, um, I can see the info of this circuit. Here we see that, well, the circuit half, uh, just a it's a very small circuit, but have four wires one constraint, two private inputs, and one output. Okay, so that's the one thing. Here you see that I passed the compiled version of this. The other thing that I can do is, for example, I can print the constraints that it generated, this, the, the compiler, okay? So here, it just generated one constraint that says A times B equals, well, minus C equals zero. So the minus can, uh, well, it's min uh, well, here is a, with a negative. So the negative, can, this side can go to the other side and this minus with this minus goes. This is because it, uh, 
it goes, this uh, constraint systems, it go with a standard format. It's a linear combination of the signals times the linear combination of the other signals minus linear combinations to the signals equals zero. And this is many times, okay? So this, this is put in the in this system. But here you can see all individually all the constraints. This is good for, for debugging and see what generates the code, okay? So um, next step. Um, well, we need to, here we, in a normal, in a real circuit here we would run, we already have the circuit, we would run the, the, trusted, the, the, the trusted setup, okay? So here's a multi-party ceremony, this is like another story. In this case, what we are doing is a trusted setup in my computer, so it's not a really a trusted setup, it's you have, to, you have to trust yourself, but for testing everything it works. Uh, it works uh, okay. Or it could work even if, it's, if you wanna, so I can compile a circuit, then you can and then give you the trusted setup to you and you can prove to me. So for individual uh, proofs, it also would work. Okay, so here let's see what it does. Here is a long line. Let's see if I don't forget. Okay. What it is, of course, is a setup. The input is the, the, the output of the compiler, the circuit that I want to generate the trusted setup for. It generates, this is, it generates two files. One is the proving key and the verification key. The proving key is all the information that you need to generate proofs, and the verification key is all the information you need to verify that proofs, okay? And in this case, I'm also specifying the, the protocol, the growth, well, the growth 16, okay? That's the protocol that, 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 that I'm using. Okay, so right now if we see what we have here, well we have the, of course the circuit, we have the, the, the circuit compiler and then the private, uh, the, 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 the proving key and the verification key. Okay, so now we can start uh, uh, creating proofs. Okay, but the first, you know, five minutes only? Okay, 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 I'm going fast. Uh, Okay, uh, generate, I'm, I'm gonna generate the proofs. Uh, first, to, to generate the proof first, I, uh, to generate the proof first, I, I need to create, uh, uh, I need to execute the circuit. So I put, a, I, I just create a file with the inputs of the circuit, okay? Then I c calculate the witness, or if you want, you run the circuit. So with those inputs, here you see as an input, as an input, uh, uh, calculate the witness uh, uh, to the circuit, you get the input, and then the output is the witness. If you see the, uh, the output, here we see all the internal signals that generated. So mainly what I did now is I just run the circuit and generate all these signals in here, okay? And now with this witness, I know I can generate the proof, okay? So to generate the proof, Oh. Generate the proof. Of course, I pass the witness, I press the proving key, and it generates the proof plus the public, which is just a subset of the signals with only the public keys. If I see the public, it just have the 33. But I already have the proof. If I see the proof, Yeah, here is all the, the, the points that actually makes the, the, the proof, okay? And now that I have the proof, for example, I can verify, I can verify that proof. In this case, it's okay. Here, it's verify, you pass the verification key, you pass the proof, you pass the public input, that's what you really want to verify, and then it says that's, of course, that's, that's okay, okay? And now let's go a little bit further, okay? The other thing that I can do here is generate, a, just in this case is generate a, a solidity version of this prover, okay? So I can do, for example, cat uh, verifier, okay? Here it's a full verifier, okay? So what I'm gonna do here, so let me see if I'm able, Let me see if I. Need a 
cut and paste. And I'm going to go to remix. OK, so I'm going to put all that to here. Uh, OK, uh, compile. Well, it's uh, 4.25. I already have it set up, OK? So I just generate the verifier, OK? And I'm, I'm running in, in, in this case, I'm running in, in Vinkaby, OK? So I'm just going to deploy it. Let's see if it not takes very much. Let me just go with a higher price case. So, so I'm deploying this contract here. Let's see if it, if it does not take a long. Oh, this is the old one. Here it is. It's already deployed, OK? So now I should try and I should call the verifier. If you see the verifier of a proof here, uh, verify proof here, I see is this is the proof and the input. You see here is the proof and the input, OK? But to generate all these parameters in, in Snark.js, I can do it. Uh, so I have a special option just to generate this. So these are the parameters, but especially here, what I see uh, put here is uh, generate call with the proof that I want to really prove, and the public is so I just put all the calling, all the calling parameters. So if I could and paste this, okay, I can go directly to the remix and could and paste here. So if I verify the proof, it says okay. So proof, for example, if I change any number. For example, instead of here, let's put a 22 and verify the proof it goes false. Okay, so I just generated a full circuit, created a through the setup, I generated a proof, I deployed a contract, I verified it on uh, chain. So that's very much a little bit how this uh, tool uh, works. So I think I'm running. So here, just to finish, this is the current status of what we are doing in Ident3 on this uh, SNARK. So we are working very much in uh, optimizing. So we are working a lot in optimizing. Optimizing all this SNARK.js in WebAssembly so we can generate proofs from the, from the system very fast. We have the also working with uh, GPU optimizing and so on. And we are also working in Circom just to, to generate bigger circuits and to optimizing a lot. And that's it. That's, uh, I don't know if we have time for questions, but <laughs> thank you. If we are late, so we can we can we can talk we can talk whenever you you want, okay? So.